Шаухин. Пас на пятак не проходит, хотя там открывался. Лукаш Седлак. Шварев получает силовой прием. Николенко. Не удалось Металлургу вывести шайбу из своей зоны. Но вот сейчас Коробкин. Коробкин, посмотрите, как здорово ушел от защитника. И выход 3 в 1 у Металлурга. Передача. И Федотов! Какое спасение от Ивана Федотова. Выручает он свою команду после броска Ильи Николаева. Иван Федотов, если так вспомнить, один из матчей против Хабаровского Амура. Там сделал спасение, я не знаю, сезона может быть. Hello there. It is Isaiah. We have an OB podcast special for you. And I think you know why. Uh, Ivan Fedotov, a nine-year saga that played out for Philadelphia Flyers fans, the organization for Ivan himself, has a new chapter. And that is the one where Ivan lands in Philadelphia much faster than some of us believed it was possible. But here we are. We're going to get into that in this uh, pretty quick special that we're doing today. And because we didn't want to wait until another show because it's it's exciting. And we're going to talk about why. And we're going to try and keep it measured as well, because uh, this is a player that's never played an NHL game. But just a reminder that the OMB podcast is brought to you by FlyersNittyGritty.com. Also, some of the adjusters who are licensed in PA and New Jersey don't go against the big insurance companies for storm or home damaged. And you can check them out. Call them at 215-919-1434. Ask for Chef, Chef B. Tell them you heard about us on the OMB podcast or at flyersnittygritty.com. And without any further ado, let's bring in the great Dan Silver. Dan, what's, what's, what's the word? going what, off? What's on your mind, man? Man, I got a six foot eight Russian on my mind, and it's uh, Ivan Fedotov. What a, I mean, this. I was listening to Elliot Friedman's thirty two thoughts or whatever it is this morning, and he was just talking about how good Danny Breer and Keith Jones are at keeping things under their hat, and this nobody had any inklings about Ivan Fedotov potentially coming over until a few days ago. You know, or maybe it was even yesterday. I don't know that they said that he's breaking his contract with, uh, you know, uh, CSKA and uh, that the rumor was he was coming over here. And now here we are and we can recap the saga, whatever you want to do. But it's 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 incredible. And it could actually have a big impact on this franchise, not just not just potentially this year, but, um, you know, after that as well. I'm sure. I mean, the big question, one of the big questions going in since Carter Hart has left the scene has been the Flyers goaltending and now they have to go chasing for a backup. And if everything worked out, okay, we could have a one, a one B situation in goal. If at a top can pull his weight, but let's, let's kind of take it back from the beginning. Ivan Fedotov was originally drafted in the seventh round, 188th overall in the 2015 NHL draft. And as a 19-year-old, he attended the Flyers' uh, development camp. He met Felix Sandstrom at that time. Then he went back to play in the KHL. And after doing really well at the Olympics in, what was it, 22, he signed a contract. And he was all set to leave Russia and come over and play for the Flyers and be part of their tandem, whatever. And then he got stopped. And... He was interdicted by the Russian military saying that, you know, the government said that he had a military obligation that he had to fulfill. And it was just like a heartbreaker. 
And you didn't know whether the Russians are being spiteful with all the geopolitical stuff or this was something that Ivan and his agent had overlooked and the Flyers hadn't done their due diligence. So why don't we why don't I leave it there and you can kind of pick it up? Yeah, and he was Ivan Fedotov, you know, six foot eight, kind of took him as a as a as a flyer, literally and figuratively. And he turned into a few seasons after they drafted him, he became one of the better goalies in Russia. I mean, if you look at his numbers in 20 from 2018 through 2022, he was arguably the best Russia Russian goaltender um, in, in Russia for those years. He was, I mean, look at in, it to end the 2022 season in the playoffs he had a 937 save percentage and a 185 goals against average to end the 2022 season. And, and as you mentioned, that was the end of that season. The Flyers signed him to a contract. And then a few days later, Russia, you know, he was leaving a practice and he got shuttled into a van and taken off to some Siberian military camp and spent a year, uh, you know, on an aircraft carrier or some kind of military installation. Then he comes comes back at the beginning of this year and, and folks thought that the Flyers, uh, the Flyers were arguing that his contract was told T O L L E D, which is a yeah. um, legal term that would mean that since he did not have a, uh, since he didn't have a possibility of fulfilling that contract, that it just rolled over one more year. So the Flyers are saying that they had a valid contract with him. It rolled over to this year and he should be in the NHL. However, uh, the KHL disagreed. And so he signed a two-year contract with CSKA, the same team that he'd been uh, with in 2022, where he had that great playoff run. Right. Uh, there was a you know big hullabaloo about it. Uh, and ultimately what happened was the International Ice Hockey Federation put sanctions in place against CSKA and the KHL, but he still ended up playing over there. So... Flyers fans, for the most part, at least me, sort of thought it was a lost cause. Like, okay, we've lost this battle. Fedotov is going to be staying over in Russia for the foreseeable future, at least for two years. And then after this season's over, we just get this news yesterday that he's, you know, terminated, mutual termination of his contract. And now today they had the press conference with him and Danny Briere. He's a member of the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, he was just okay this year which is understandable yeah. considering the fact that he spent all of last year not playing hockey in a military instant you know a um, military camp or wherever he was so the second half of this year he was much better than the first half of this year he was okay in the playoffs but they got bounced in the first round which is a little bit of an upset um so he comes over but he is clearly immediately one of the two best goalies currently in the Flyers organization. So Danny Briere today in the press conference talked about how it's going to be up to the coaching staff, right? What they're going to do with Ivan Fedotov the rest of this season. And we'll see what happens. He was on the ice today. Uh, Jason Martinez talked about how difficult it is for a goalie to, to kind of like acclimate to new surroundings. He had to get new goalie pads, um, new glove, new chest right, new protectors. Equipment. Yeah, all yeah. new equipment. So he's breaking that in, which is apparently very hard to do for a goalie. You know, the puck will drop out of his glove. He's got it just like a baseball mitt, right? You need to break it in a little mm -hmm. bit. But with the way that the Flyers backup goaltending situation has been with Felix Sandstrom really struggling, I, I would be shocked if Ivan Fedotov doesn't play at least a few games the rest of this season. And one of the advantages is, is that opposing teams are not going to have a book on Ivan Fedotov. So he's a guy that could take the NHL by storm uh, depending on, you know, how he's feeling physically. Again, this was his first year after the military situation. So I would expect that next year when he's got a full summer to train, um, I would expect that next year it's going to be a real battle between him and Sam Erson for the Flyers starting goaltending battle. But with Carter Hart leaving uh, under those circumstances, I mean, this is just a, a great story for the Flyers. And they've got a guy who he clearly has number one NHL goalie upside. Yeah, I, I mean, I would think that it, at least average number one goalie. And I think more to the point, 
with him and Ursan, it the goaltending tandem has the potential to become a strength again, like it was for the first half of this season. Now it's it's actually a weakness because you're putting too much on a rookie who had very little NHL experience in Urson. And plus, there's the issue of the durability uh, that came up with Urson last year in Lehigh Valley. So I think you're answering both questions that are checking off both boxes, you know, regard, you know, depending on how you want to put it. But I think the other thing here is just from a fan's perspective, if you give Fedotov like a week and you look at the Flyers schedule and you say, okay, I can't expect him to play coming up this Saturday against Chicago. And he needs more time to get, they play again on Monday. Then you have three days off. And then the Flyers will have that extra time. And they they go back to back in Buffalo on Friday the 5th and Columbus on Saturday the 6th. And one of those games would seem to be the ideal first chance for them to slot in Ivan Fedotov and see what he can do. I think before that, people were saying, oh, yo, let's, and including some people should know better. To just, I mean, he just got, got back from Russia. You imagine only the jet lag. And then, you know, like you were talking about with, with Jason Martinez breaking into equipment, having to learn the league. From what I understand, and, and Dan, you would know this better, a, a lot of the, most of the KHL rinks are now NHL regulation. Is that the case? I honestly don't completely know, but that sounds okay. right. I wouldn't want to say anything just because I'm not entirely sure, but you mm-hmm. could probably search. I heard that at least. Before. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard that that is the case, but yeah, Apple Yard would know that. He, he's good with that kind of stuff. You know, he said something and re- referencing Alex Apple Yard, who frequently contributes with Charlie O'Connor at the PHLY, formerly the Athletic. So he was talking about that there with this agreement, when he signed that agreement with C. Scott, Boris Mikhailov, I think he was a, a Soviet great player. I know he's part of their uh, the system, but I, I could be it could be his son for all I know. Mikhailov is a is a name that harkens memories back to the 70s and 80s. But anyway, he he said that Fedotov had a clause in his contract or a gentleman's agreement that after a year, because he had signed a two-year deal, like you mentioned, he could go choose uh, to you know play for the Flyers if he wanted. And maybe that's what was worked out. Maybe it was the power of Comcast. I don't know. But we're kind of a little bit all over the map in our excitement here. But the bottom line is, the Flyers have a viable option to get reasonable goaltending instead of having the dread of holding your breath and hoping of maybe the Flyers can eke out a point if Samuel Urson is not in net. And of course, that tended to wear on Sam. I think we'd all would confess that as well. Yeah, and you know, for me, and I sort of hinted at this in my my comments before we were talking, was I'm more excited about this for next season and moving forward yeah, yeah. than I am about it for now, just because I have some hesitations about how good Fedotov could potentially be off the plane. And in just, since he's probably had a long and stressful season uh, and I'm not really con- convinced that this Flyers team can go far in the playoffs anyway. So I'm kind of more excited about it for next season moving forward because I really think that he could become he could become an elite NHL goaltender depending on how he adapts to the game here. He could end up taking the starting job away from from Urson. And so to me that's kind of like the 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 more important point ultimately. But um you know, he so he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. I think based on what's happened and you could hear him kind of talking about this. So he did the press conference today with Danny Briere. His English, I was surprised. I had a, uh, One of my buddies who follows the Minnesota Wild texted me during the press conference, and he was like, this guy speaks better English than Kirill Kaprizov. So, and he's around the same <laughs> age as Kaprizov. So I think that's impressive, the fact that Fedotov already kind of knows English a little bit. He struggled with some of the questions. But he clearly, they asked him about wanting to stay with the Flyers. Like he, it sounds like it's almost a formality that he's going to sign a contract extension with the Flyers. And based on, I'm sure all of the work that the Flyers had to do to get him out of Russia, he's probably very trusting in them. And so 
I think it's a slam dunk that he'll sign a contract extension, uh, maybe a multi-year contract extension this summer. Probably I'm thinking maybe like a two-year deal or something like that. Yeah. Kevin Kurz from The Athletic, you know, he's tied in with Pierre Lebron and and guys like that. He had a piece today and he cites a league source suggesting that Fedotov extension will likely be a two-year deal. So then what you would have is a scenario where both Ursan and Fedotov are starting two-year deals. And that's ideal. And they're not and they're not going to be real expensive. So yeah, and, that know, gives the Flyers yeah. flexibility as well. Yeah, and and the other thing we haven't talked about is the other Russian goaltender, Alexei Kolosov, who yeah. is also already under contract with the Flyers, and presumably he will be uh, coming over soon as well. And they, you know, when when the fly before the Flyers had signed Fedotov, people were saying, oh, maybe they'll start Kolosov in the NHL this year. Um, you know, he's 22 years old, so he's five years younger than Fedotov is. Um, but he's extremely talented also. You know, Fedotov is tall. Uh, he's more of kind of like your what you'd think of as like your traditional NHL goaltender. Kolosov's a little bit smaller. Kolosov is um, six foot. He's extremely athletic. He would immediately athletic, become right. one he of the most on that. He would become one of the most athletic goaltenders in the NHL right away. Um and so he's not exactly young. I mean, he's basically, I think, maybe one year younger than than Urson. So he, and him coming over to the U.S. like these Russian goalies, they don't want to come over here unless they're going to have a shot at the NHL. So like, I would not be surprised. I'm guessing their assumption is that Kolosov will start next year in the AHL. He's definitely going to play in the AHL when he gets over here this year. But I, you know, if. They're, him and Fedotov are both sort of unknown quantities on the NHL ice surface and against NHL competition. Like there could be an open competition between Fedotov, Urson, and Kolosov for the Flyers' starting goaltender next year, with probably Urson, you know, and Fedotov having the major advantage. But but Kolosov's very talented too. Yeah, I'm just looking up these. Kolosov is 22. And Urson is what, 23 or 24? I think Urson's 23, right? He's 24. According to Cat Friendly. Okay. So, and we know, we both know how dangerous it is to look on Cat Friendly when we're doing a show. Yeah. So, for, for those, for the uninitiated, it, 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 this site has so many pop ups, it just blows up everything. I've had, People disconnect and everything like that when we're trying to look stuff up, but have to have that ad blocker on. So it, being fair to the guys who have tried to do their best, as John Tortorella had to apologize to uh, to Felix Sandstrom with his non-answer answer the other night after one of the Flyers' losses where the Flyers deserved better than to lose, and that was the, um, I guess, the Florida game. Was that the Florida game? Which um, was that the Florida game that Ursan played? I, I bet the Sandstrom. Yes, I believe it was the Florida yeah. game, right? Right. So, getting back to Fedotov, I think it was a good thing that Breer took the time to explain that both Ursan and Felix Sandstrom were kept in the loop, and told that look there's a possibility that ivan could be coming in and if it does happen that way that he was going to get a crack at the backup job while at the same time telling sam you've done a good job you've earned the number one spot and we trust you and we believe in you and all that so that's all you can ask as a player to know where you stand in, in that regard so technically Sandstrom is is demoted back to the AHL, and he can join his buddy Cal Peterson. And I I don't think there's really much of a future for him. For Sandstrom, I could see him going back to. Uh, it's funny, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, Sandstrom, if he played fairly well, my, in in our eyes, not knowing about Fedotov, thinking Fedotov wasn't even part of, on the radar. Think, well, Sandstrom, maybe he, he has a last chance to grab an NHL spot for next year. And Adam Jenning, 
is probably going to go to Sweden. And now it looks like it's the other way around. It looks like Sandstrom will probably go to Europe. And Adam Jennings could be like a replacement for Rasmus Ristolainen if the Flyers uh, can work something out in the offseason there. So it's funny, just a couple weeks, and it's not even – we're past the trade deadline and things are happening. This is maybe not – this is week, never a week. Maybe next week Mitchkov will be here. Who knows? Hey, you never know. You know, what? Fedotov, the big guy, I'm sure he didn't get all of his stuff over to so maybe in, in a, a big storage – a compartment he, he can stow away. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but it's certainly, I mean, I'm joking. I, yeah, I don't think there's, yeah. you know, there's very little chance that Mitchkov will be over here soon. But um, but it certainly gives you confidence the, that the fact that Flyers could work out this Fedotov situation and he ends up, ter- you know, terminating his contract a year early. It certainly gives you hope that Mitchkov has two years left on his contract over there, maybe at the end of next year they might be able to, you know, somehow work it out and get him over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you remember many years back, the F- Phillies had this uh, prank that they played on Kyle Kendrick where he was traded to Japan and everybody went along with it. I thought it was a little mean, but everybody went along with it. And he was really, he he, he looked, he bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And I was thinking to myself, you know, what did the Flyers we're willing to trade certain guys who'd be willing to go to, to the KHL. I mean, you know, like everybody is scheming. How do we get Mitch Copper for here? <laughs> like how much Comcast is all that wealth. Do you think it's possible that they, you know, they kicked in a little money to kind of facilitate. Absolutely. To get it's, I think it's absolutely it's possible. Here? Now the St. Petersburg yeah. owner, the, the franchise that owns Mitch Cop, I mean, their owner is like, as you know, uh, one of the richest guys in the world. So I don't think that's the that's same the Roman guy, right? Of Fed- yeah. Roman Rotenberg. Uh, yeah. You know, and his father or whatever, the owner of, um, yeah, of St. Yeah. Petersburg, I think money might, you know, they might not meet, need it as bad, but yeah. Hey, it's called doing what it takes. So Comcast is flexing their financial muscle to the benefit of the Philadelphia Flyers. It, it is, it's exactly what you, you would hope that they would do. And under the previous regime, that that just they just define mediocre. But there's no reason on a day like today, Dan. There's no use to dwell on that. So, you know, looking forward, they, they obviously the Flyers fell into a trap game last night. You know, the gauntlet. They didn't get started till midway through the second period. There's no no reason to dwell on that. They they have the Chicago game on Saturday, and we talked about the eight more games. The Islanders on Monday, April Fools. Uh, then we have the fifth and the sixth with the Sabres and Columbus. We expect, and I, I think you you agree that uh, Fedotov would, if he makes his debut, it would probably be there. And then they go into next week, Tuesday, at Montreal again, chance for revenge. They play at New York, another chance for revenge. Flies have done pretty well with that on the eleventh. Then the thirteenth Saturday night, that's when Wayne Simmons comes back. And signs that one-year deal and retires as a flyer. And they wrap it all up at home on the 16th, a Tuesday night versus the Capitals. And hopefully by then the Flyers have a spot and don't even have to worry about positioning. And I know last show <laughs> I was playing the Doubting Thomas and you were getting a little aggravated. I thought it was funny. It came off pretty well. But, um, yeah, any, I, anything else to add uh, in terms of uh, kind of like approaching this whole Fedotov? subject no i just think it's 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 funny how things work out you know with with all this stuff that that we had to go through with the whole carter hart situation um and now it's sort of like maybe karma swinging our way a a little bit mainly i mean we're flyers fans so we we shouldn't get too confident about karma being on our side but it's it's nice and and i think that it's also it's really nice for ivan fedotov i mean you think about how much he's been through over the past few years I'm just happy for him, quite honestly, like just on an individual human being perspective. Like I just I'm happy for the guy like he you know, how how stressful must it have been for him to get shoved in a van after hockey practice? He thought he was going to come over to North America. Then he gets sent off to military duty. I mean, I think there were stories coming out that he was having some some anxiety issues when that was all, you know, after that had happened, which is understandable. but um. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's great for him as a person. So good for Flyers fans. Good for Ivan Fedotov. Just good all around. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, there, there's a, there's a trauma bit there. And I know sometimes people jump on that for maybe reasons that don't justify that. But I, I definitely think being interdicted by the Russian military and saying, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> you, need, you need to, you need to come with us. Yeah. Don't you do not have to be mad, but you have to come with us anyway. Uh, Stephen Ellis from the Daily Faceoff had a, a tweet about Fedotov and appreciating uh, what he had gone through, and he was it was nice. He said, you know, he was happy for the Flyer fans to get what he called a win after everything has happened with Hart Gautier, and he was talking about how good Fedotov was at the 22 Olympics. It, yeah, it's a really good thing. And I think that's pretty much the sentiment throughout the league. And, and there's not a lot of resentment, too. That was the other thing Apple Yard had in a tweet that nobody's unhappy uh, with uh, it from the Russian perspective that Fedotov chose to come to the NHL. It was kind of like, look, he did his military service. He made it through. And here he is. So it'll, he'll be on the bench tomorrow night. Hopefully he doesn't have to come in. The Flyers, <laughs> when they need him, they need him. They, 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 you never know with uh, John Tortorella. I guess I'm going to put a wrap on it there, unless you have any final thoughts. No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm happy about it. It's good. Good way to head into the weekend as a Flyers fan. Absolutely. We've got a holiday weekend. I hope all the people that celebrate Easter uh, have a, a good holiday with the family, or whatever you like to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so it was, happy holiday it, yeah. Day. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Easter. Uh, and uh, just a reminder before we go that the OMB Puckcast can be found on the app known as X at OMB Puck at OMB Puck. We're also on Getter at OMB Puckcast at OMB Puckcast. And of course, more on all the major uh, podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, uh, iHeart, you name it. We have a YouTube page where we have a Facebook page. And if you could follow, rate, subscribe, it really helps move us up the charts when people are looking for Philadelphia Flyer podcasts. So that is it for today's show. Thanks for listening. And until next time, everybody, take care.